Right, I'm Chris Steele and here with me is Cameron Dunn. We're bringing you all the action and analysis from day three here for Live, Sell, Die. All right, so first out of the blocks is we had NES Team UK racing Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team. And Cam, you know, we've talked a lot about how strong Luna Rossa looks in the light airs and maybe how NES needs to, that's probably the area they need to work on in the most. But I was really impressed early on with NES Team UK. They seemed to get on the foils. They entered with two foils down. Um, and they looked like they were making a bit of a race out of it early on, albeit they started down at the pin end and, and they got away quite well, but Luna Rossa with that w wide right start sort of set up to Liebau attack them and um, from there, you know, they, they sort of stayed in touch for the first lap, but then they, they came to some real issues falling off the foils on the second lap. Yeah, you're exactly right, you know, the, the wide right start gave Luna Rossa the control. Yeah, um, Ineos Team UK were in the race, still lacking that click of boat speed the whole time so slowly falling behind and then by the bottom gate once they fell off the foils from that jibe down the bottom unfortunately she's race over all right and then race two we had um team new zealand going up against america magic and obviously that was the feature match of the day you know the two teams at the top of the table and uh it was america magic who did a really nice job of getting that wide ride start that we talked about being so powerful and sure enough kiwis all the way down at the pin a little bit bow forward to start with but very quickly you could see the situation playing out they got to the boundary and when they tacked it was american magic who were just in that strong position to sort of lee bow and cover them yeah we saw that all day with the starts and in this light air and we, we've talked about it a lot in the past that that wide right start's going to be super strong in this light air. With only a minute to the boundary, there's no way that the boat down to Lourdes there's going to get enough of a gain to get around them and that light stuff through those big tacking angles. So yeah, really nice start from American Magic. They nailed their timing and then had control of Team New Zealand from that first intersection and then showed really nice speed. Yeah, it was interesting for me about that race was, you know, the two boats were in sync early on, you know, American Magic with that sort of cover tack, both boats heading out to the right and then it seems very difficult for the boat behind to break that cover um, to, to engineer any sort of split but the Kiwis kind of at one point tacked over and the Americans kind of let them go and we finally got a bit of a split happening and I think uh, the two boats went round opposite gates at the top mark and um, the race was right on and it wasn't until sort of the bottom gate where again I think I think they went around the opposite gates and and it was coming back together in that first cross where it was kind of all happening still American Magic had the uh, advantage and it wasn't until halfway up the second beat where the Kiwis really picked up a bit of a right hand shift and came right back into it um, and then unfortunately you know well American, American Magic ducked behind them on port and then they set up that intersection at the top and I don't know what you saw with the with attack from American Magic but that was no, pretty much the race. No unfortunately we missed the attack on the coverage but um, you know I thought it was what was really interesting was leading into that the way that the right was strong at the top on the first beat you could hear some pretty nice comms off American Magic going up that beat when they had crossed in front of Team New Zealand earlier on in their minds, they'd almost conceded the lead at that point where mm. Dean was talking about, oh, we'll probably have to dip them next time, but we'll get out to that right pressure. Yeah, so I think even he... though they lost a bit, they were happy where they were going. So that top mark intersection was going to be a beauty. Yeah, definitely seemed like there was a moment when they were coming across on starboard and Dean kind of said, oh, should we hit him? And there was a probably a two-second gap, and then all of a sudden he said, "Oh no, we've got to go straight now." Mm. And that was when the Kiwis hooked him to the righty. But like you said, you know that they weren't laying the top mark, so it set up one more intersection. And um, yeah, th I thought Magic was going to come back with starboard right. The so Kiwis were just laying that right turn, so it was going to be really tight as yeah. to whether they could get across. And if they weren't going to get across, they weren't going to be high enough up on the ley line that they could duck and still get round. So it would have been a lead change for sure, but unfortunately something happened there in the tack and you could hear the onboard comms from Barker. He was sort of saying, you know, this is really frustrating. We've got to sort this out. So it kind of seems like it was either an equipment issue or some sort of gear failure that they're having on board the boat, which might have happened more than once before. Yeah, we've, we've seen it in a bit in the past with them and we, and we did see it in their next race too when they, they had a bad tack and they get that tendency to... To launch the thing out of the air when they get it wrong. Yeah. So whether it's a, a rudder issue when the when the other foil goes in, I don't know. I'm I'm no expert in that. But they are they have been consistently getting that wrong every now and again. So as you say, yeah, they'll have to sort it out. But hey, I'm sure both teams were actually disappointed in the end that the race couldn't carry on as close as it was because they would have been learning a ton out of it. Yeah. But really solid performance from 
from American Magic in that lighter air. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, they really did. I thought Team New Zealand possibly had a click on them downwind, but there really wasn't a lot in it. It was a good tactical race. Um, but, you know, Team New Zealand went off, didn't make the mistake, and got a solid win in the end. Yeah, and then that set us up for race three. So it was uh, NES Team UK against um, American Magic. And once again, you know, the Americans really dominant in the start. Ben actually did a nice job, but he picked up a pre-start penalty. And again, you know, I think there was plenty of signs that they were taking the right steps forward, but we were in a bit of a dying breeze, and we saw how quickly that boat kind of falls out of range. Yeah, that you know, yeah, the the wide right start again. The first tack they get planted on. They've got gas as well as struggling to get up on their foils. It's never going to work from there. And I, I I felt sorry for them in that one. It was really painful to watch. And I'm sure being on, you could tell from the body language on board that they weren't exactly happy at all. It, you know, it's a horrible feeling being a competitive team and just not having the have, not having the kit to be able to sail the race. Yeah, it's a tough one, especially for Ben because obviously. He's got to be the leader here. He's got to try and keep the morale high amongst the team. And, you know, there is a bit of time for them to make some changes. But, yeah, but pretty demoralising when you can't actually finish the race in time. It'll be interesting to see what they do change. It just looks like they've just got to be able to generate more power out of the boat, whether it's the, it's, there's obviously lots of little things, but certainly even in the sail plan and the, and the rig setup, they're not generating the power to get yeah. the boat out. They, it just looks really, really dull. And uh, yeah, race four, what an absolute cracker. It was set up for the winner of the America's Cup World Series 20, uh, 2020. And well, the stage was set. It was that sort of dying breeze that we talked about. Luna Rosses looked really strong in that breeze. And I was interested to see how they were going to shape up. And um, they just cleaned them out at the start, completely dominated. It was an interesting one. Kiwis stuck below sort of pin lay. Uh, Luna Rossa, Team Prada, hooked up on their right hip and the Kiwis kind of looked like they put the bow down to build speed to set up to just tack and cross behind and obviously Jimmy Spittle at the helm said he wasn't going to make it that easy, put the bow down to match them and, and set them up so that when they started both boats were on port and the Kiwis were directly behind. Yeah, I wonder in that, in that light stuff, you know, these pre-starts have been intriguing and, you know, Team New Zealand made the choice when they entered on starboard to, to go pretty deep down into the box and I... I in my mind I'm wondering do they have to go that far down to try and get away from the gas of Luna Rossa who's crossed in front of them on port or do or should the better option be to jibe immediately around that starboard end of the start line and follow because it seems soon as they went down into the bottom end of the box there they're putting themselves in a really awkward position to come back and have to pull off a nice tack in that light air with a boat with all the control coming in on starboard and as you said Jimmy put them under pressure and uh, yeah cleaned them out. It's such a hard maneuver isn't it because you're coming in on port and light airs you know you've got to execute a foiling tack um, to, to not get cleaned out at the start and but it's really hard to factor how deep your build angle is out of that tack to stay on the foil and I think you know they came out of the tack and they were slow and they put the bow down and then all of a sudden they're, they're tied on the ley line to the pin so you know, they cleaned them out at the start, but that wasn't the end of the race. You know, the, the Italians did a really nice job of leading around the top. And then halfway down that first run, or not even that, big hole, both boats off the foils. I think the Kiwis went around the top mark off the foils. And, yeah, and it was a race the to Kiwis get back on the foils. It, you know, it looked a bit painful, them having to shoot the top mark and come off the foils. But in hindsight, looking at it, it was a very smart thing to do. Because there's no way they would have been able to tack and stay on the foils and then get it through the gate. Any time, so they took the the lesser of two evils, got round there, and then did an early jibe, still in in displacement mode, which gave them a bit of runway, and they were so lucky in the end that they just got the puff in enough time to get to the boundary and pull off a jibe, and then it was all on again with poor old Luna Rossa, again a bit unlucky, stuck down there in no breeze. Oh, it's like one of those, probably the first time all week that we've seen the breeze get to the boat behind first, you know, traditionally speaking with the parent wind, it's always going to be the boat in front that gets the pick of the breeze, but they came off the foils and it filled in from behind and it was just enough for the Kiwis to get up and they pulled back, uh, I think it was 850 metres in a matter of probably 45 seconds to a minute, it was impressive. Yeah, it's, 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 it's weird, it's, it's cool um, and it's, it's interesting, um, you know, and Hey, and then the pressure's really on. Every manoeuvre from then on, you could see that the, 
the expression on Burling's face, he's normally very cool and calm, and you could just tell there was a little more riding on every one of those manoeuvres. Well, all you need is one person in one situation to just get the timing slightly wrong, the boat falls off the foils, and there's probably not enough wind for it to ever get back up again. No, exactly. So both teams sailed really, really well from then on. Luna Rossa do look, as we suspected, you know, they look like they're, they're the boat to beat in that, in that light stuff as far as manoeuvring and the speed goes. But, you know, to get around someone's a different story and Team New Zealand hung on there, did all their manoeuvres beautifully and ended up winning the America's Cup World Series. Yeah, really cool for us. Yeah, it's certainly, you know, at both extremes of the wind conditions it makes my job a bit harder. So, uh, yeah, pretty difficult to keep it on the foils around the whole course. But, you know, through the manoeuvres we got a couple of the other lads and um, help us out to get it, get it through and, you know, did an awesome job from, from everyone there, the whole the whole team on board just to keep it going. We, you know, we touched back down, but the boat's going really well in the takeoff condition, so we managed to get going again and, um, you know, just keep in the race and then, and then obviously pass them when they fell off the foils. All right, and that's it's stage for tomorrow, doesn't it? One last uh, day of racing with the Christmas Cup. So we start off with a semi-final format where the Team New Zealand's going to be racing NES Team UK in a straight knockout, and then Luna Rossa Team Prada is going to race American Magic straight knockout. Winners go to a final one-off race, and we get a Christmas Cup winner. So similar conditions. Similar conditions. Who's your money on? Well, I'm, I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'd put my money on uh, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team. Yeah. Okay, well I'm going to say, uh, obviously it's hard to beat against the Kiwis, I think it was a small window where it looked like they were really, really good and then it, it just looked like the Italians maybe had a slight edge in that marginal foiling, six knot wind range, seven knot, um, but I actually thought the Americans looked really good as well in the lower wind range, so I think, you know, if it's above eight knots, so there's three boats here that are very competitive and, um, you know, we've talked about Ineos needing to, to try and make some changes and catch up, but I still wouldn't write them out for the uh, Challenger Series moving forward. So you're going for American Magic tomorrow? I'm going to, yeah, for argument's sake, I'm going to say American Magic. <laughs> okay, so that's our wrap-up for the day. Massive shout-out to all our sponsors. We couldn't be doing this without them, so please get out there and support them. They've been awesome. This is Cameron Dunn and Chris Steele for Live, Sail, Die. See you tomorrow.